this thing is made up of a couple main pieces. We'll, we'll break it down. You have the track. And it's just uh, the larger size angle iron. And it's a little bit taller than the next size down. And it's welded in at an angle. And this keeps the sawdust going down, which keeps it out of your V groove wheels. So, before I move on to the wheels, you have, uh, they call them dogs. Everybody's got a different way to build these, and uh, this is mine, okay? You have the actual dog leg itself, which I cut this way because uh, I clamp, I actually use wood clamps to clamp the log still, to hold it still. And it runs into, the, the bolt runs through this, it's welded to the leg, okay? And this piece of pipe, just a piece of iron pipe is welded to the small piece of angle iron, the lower, the lower setting piece, and uh, it's got a big old bolt, and, and this uh, this tightens up. So I could actually bring this up, <clears throat> tighten it up. It seems like a lot of work, doesn't it? But you know, this is homemade. And the thing will stand up, and you want to be able to do it at different angles because the log is going to get smaller. All right, so this gives you something to clamp to. I mean, when you get to this part, you'll figure out your own way, but this is mine, and uh, this is how I do it. I'm sure you'll come up with something else. There's a whole bunch of other better ideas than that. Now, here's the feet. So like a rectangular flat kind of tube steel. You don't have to have the weld removed kind. Or anything like that. And it's welded to a bracket. Homemade bracket. A bolt. And some homemade aluminum wheels. Like I, I made these myself with my own aluminum foundry. I'm very proud. Thank you very much. And yes, they would corrode on this steel. If you sat them still in one spot for a hundred years, you might get a flat spot. But no, they don't corrode. And yes, it was easy to make them. And it saved me an ass load of money making them myself. So, and then that comes up to the legs. And these legs, look, ain't no special weld people. You don't have to be that damn strong. It just has to hold it in place. Because on the other end of the foot there, you have a brace. And these are on either side. One in the back on this side. And on this side, it's in the front. With nothing in the back. They caddy corner and make it uh, rigid. So I move on up the leg here. And uh, I'm going to look at this piece real quick. When you... When you get this piece of square tubing, it needs to be weld removed. That means the weld that's on the inside of this tube has to be removed. They sell it already made like this. It's expensive. You know, two pieces this size will probably cost you 25 bucks, but it's well worth it. This piece right here doesn't need the damn weld removed. It just needs to be nice and smooth. And uh, so it's just one size down. Fits right in there. If you go to your your local steel man, I go to Goodman Steel here in Zanesville, and uh, he just will come out and he'll help you size them up. He'll show you how one will slide inside the other. I mean, anybody in any town, anywhere in America, can find a guy. Probably help him out like this. I just walk in there and start messing with stuff and figure out what I need because <clears throat> it doesn't take a genius to build one of these things. So. This slides on this, using this as a track. Okay, so you're kind of getting like your 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 X, Y, Z axis, so to speak. On, you know what I mean? Like, you're up and down. You're front to back. You know? I guess there's no Z in there. But anyways, um, 
it attaches directly to the head. I call it the head. And this thing is just a piece of angle iron, people. It's ain't nothing special. Don't let those people <coughs> trick you into thinking you got to have some elaborate shit for this. You don't. Look, it runs down the length of the machine. Okay. Just a piece of angle iron. It's nice and thick. And uh, I turn up the welder when I weld it because it needs to be good and hot when it when you uh, put that together because it's about at the limit of what I can weld with my welder. All right. <clears throat> and then as we go up the leg, we have bracing. It's almost like a swing set. I just put up enough there to where, like I could get it, I can get this thing nice and high. I can get this right at eye level, this whole damn machine. I can get right up there. You run up and look at the here. You know what these are? These are training wheels. And I pulled off the wheels and I put on pulleys. These pulleys have to be the same side, both left and right. All right, another pulley right there. It's hard to see, but it comes down to a boat winch. So you get a winch, and two wheels, one, two, and it connects on this side. Okay, when you start cranking that sucker, it moves this whole, whole head up and down perfectly level. It's ingenious. I don't remember where I first heard of this or saw it because <clears throat> it took me forever to finally get the design I like, but there it is. Uh, so next, we'll talk about the head, all right? This is important. This keeps you from having to buy all kinds of extra crap. You see, right there, two bearings close together, and they fit onto a sliding bracket on, on this left side. Okay? You got the shaft, goes into a wheel. Both of these are drive wheels, okay? When I order them from PG Saw on eBay, I told him I wanted two drive wheels, okay? I don't want no drag wheel with the bearings up here in the front. I don't need that crap. That's why I bought these heavy-duty high-speed bearings. These things can handle up to 5,000 RPMs, and they're slick. When you have a bearing, this nice saves you energy. Your engine does not work as hard, okay? So this is one inch steel. I had these specially made and bought these separate. But PG Saw on eBay can sell you the shaft and the wheel, and he can do practically whatever you want, okay? And then you go get the bearings okay from any bearing place uh, I mean it sounds crazy and you start calling people they're like I don't know what you want but I guess I could probably show you the box like get a picture of the box that I got them out of at the end of this film but um, and it just comes out at the end and there's a reason for that you want that okay because if you want to convert it into a double drive system where you're running two five horsepower electric motors <clears throat> you got drives on both sides. You know, this one ain't just dragging. It actually has a key on it. It's keyed. I could put a pulley on this one and run it to the other side. And run well actually run the same system that I have on the other one right there. Okay. So there's my pulley. It goes to my five horsepower motor. In through there's the wheel, and these these ain't anything special. These are just, you know, those little things that stop the shaft from moving back and forth. It's one, two bearings, another one in the front, and if this is bolted in the front, see that? Ain't coming off of there. 